what's going on for you and how could I help? It's been very difficult, <laughs> but I, I'm going to keep going. You know, I started in June and now it's almost over. Like my test is on August 29th and I took two practice exams, one in the beginning and I got like a really, really low score. And now that I took the second exam, I, I looked, I let you know, I was, um, I got a 141. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's not that bad. I mean, I did improve and I'm happy and I'm thankful for that, but it's just, it's scary knowing that my test is in a month and I, I'm like scared. I don't have enough time for it, but so three things that I actually like noticed in my second practice exam is timing and then the reading comp I did really bad in. I don't know why. <laughs> and then I did fairly well on games and I, I was pretty shocked because <laughs> I, I always had trouble with games, but I tended to do well on games. So for timing, can you give me advice? Um, I really, because like, you know, when I started the test, I'm like, okay, I have to get this done in 35 minutes. Getting faster at logic games comes from two things. It comes from making more inferences up front and reusing previous work. Those are the two biggest ways you can increase your speed on games. So mm -hmm. that means you've got to slow down in order to speed up. You slow down during your initial setup to see what other inferences and connections you can make. And that allows you to speed up as you go through the questions. What about um, logical reasoning? Because on games, I'm pretty much, you know, getting two games, you know, correct. But then on like reading comp and logical reasoning, that's the time, you know, constraint that really scares me. I would say blast through the easier questions. Trust your gut on those. They're not really trying to trip you up majorly on those for the most part. But mm -hmm. If you were in the 140s, I would also want to make sure that you have a strong foundation in everything they're testing you on now. So you said you were at 141 before. Where are you at the moment now in terms of where you think you might be scoring on a practice test? So I'm currently taking a practice test this like week, but I'm taking it in sections. I'm not, I don't want to take it all at once because I freak out. And that's another thing I tell you, I want to tell you. So um, I've been you know, I think I'm going to do well on this practice exam because I have been practicing more on logical reasoning. Reading comp, I haven't done a lot of practice on because I'm like, there's there's a strategy and I have to work on it. You know, um, I know that your, your strategy is not to take notes um, and just to like kind of memorize everything and keep it in your head and have that like anticipation on like um, the author's attitude, the main point. But I think I find it really hard to do that. So I don't know what the best thing to do because I've tried both ways and I do the same. The best thing is whatever works for you. So try out a handful of passages one way, try out a handful of passages the other way and see what you like best. And there may even be more than two ways. The reading comp workshop I did a few weeks ago, we went into different ways you could go about it. Do you highlight? Do you not? Do you underline? Do you not? Do you take simple summaries of the paragraphs? Do you take more detailed notes or do you take no notes at all? Mm -hmm. So for, you know, my, um, my biggest struggle is timing and I freak out in the test itself. So what's the best strategy to just like calm down? <laughs> Cause I literally, yeah, I'm really scared and it's like, it, it's the end of the world for me. And it's so bad that I think this way. Yeah. A, that's a big thing. So there's a lot of ways you can approach that. And one of them would be to think about, let's say you take the August LSAT, it doesn't go well for you. Three to five years from now, what's the result? Oh, no, I'm going to take it again. <laughs> okay, so there you go. If August doesn't go well, you take it again. But I don't want to take it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Could you take it again, even if you don't want to? Yes. When could you take it again? Oh, I can take it in September because I know, no, not September, October. Yeah, and October. I'm, yeah, I'm a senior right now at SDSU. So I'm planning to actually just apply right now for fall 2021 so that I'm taking, you know, the LSAT right now, I'm studying for it for the most part. And then even if I want to take it again, I'm not going to have to like, you know, learn the material. It's just practicing. And I yeah. think I can do that. Okay, so you take it in October. And then if you go from August 29th-ish to October 3rd-ish, I say ish because flex could be a yeah. few different days. There's a range there. What would you do differently between August 29th and October 3rd? 
oh, and like what you've done up to this point. Different? How would you change your prep? I'm sorry, I don't think I understand the question. Is it going to be like, you know, if I don't take it on the 29th and I do take it on the 30th? So I'm saying, it, well, let's, say, let's say that the August LSAT, you don't feel like it goes well. And you say, you know what? I want to do October. What will you do with that additional month? Is there something that you feel you could be doing, but that you don't have time to do between now in early August and the end of August? Yeah, I think it's mostly practicing because right now I, I'm literally so dumb. I'm sorry. I was just going to say it right, right now. When I, start, when I started like taking the test, I did really, really bad. So it's not that I, um, you know, I, I just wanted to get that practice in, but it wasn't even practicing. I had to learn the material. So you know how you say it's a new language and I had to learn that language. So I think I didn't have enough time to practice, but I had enough time to learn it. You know, so like right now when I do logical reasoning, I'm thinking about the strategy and sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I forgot how to do it. That's because I didn't practice that much and I'm just learning how to do it. You know what I mean? So I would mostly focus on practicing than learning because I did the learning right now. So there you go. So you go forward for the August LSAT mm -hmm. and maybe the week prior, you're still not scoring where you want to be, in which case you could withdraw and go for okay. October instead, or you could potentially do both. If you're feeling like August might go the way you want it to go, then maybe you take it on in August and maybe you then say, you know what? I also wanted to retake in October because maybe I'll do a few points better. Or maybe with that extra month, I'll be able to do a ton of additional practice and improve significantly. But while the LSAT as a whole is incredibly important, no one particular test date will make or break you. You can retake. You've got October. You've also potentially got November. And even if you took November, that would be fine for this cycle. Okay. Yeah, because I do have a mentor. She's a district attorney. And she told me that I shouldn't be retaking it because a lot of people, you know, don't tend to score as high as they want to on their second, you know, exam. So I don't know what's right and wrong. I mean, I do hear from you and you're saying to retake it. And that's amazing. If like, you know, like I'm applying, I don't want them to think like, oh, she retook it. She didn't do well the first time. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm scared of. But then you're telling me that it's not a big deal and a lot of people retake it. I mean, so I, I don't want, I don't want the district attorney to put me in prison. I don't think she has jur jurisdiction over New York, but I'm going to disagree <laughs> no. with her on this one. And I'll say, mm -hmm. let her prosecute people. Let me talk about LSAT and admissions policies because retaking okay. is totally fine. People okay. do improve significantly. And if you don't improve significantly, maybe it's because you didn't change your prep approach, but there are ways to significantly improve on a retake with another month or two. Even if you didn't change your understanding at all through luck alone, you could do a few points better. And then if you studied a ton over that next month or two, you could do astronomically better. And law schools only take the highest score. So there's a lot of reason to retake. Okay. Okay. So for, I don't know, I think I have five more minutes. I'm going to, you know, take the time. Sure. Um, for days, should I be saying, I know you said to take the time to actually set up like different scenarios or diagrams, you call them. So should I be setting them up? Because I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time. I'm like, you know what? Let me just dive into the questions. That's, that's my main point. You know, like I get so scared of the timing. I don't want to even look at it. If you just dive into the questions, how are you going to approach them? So I write the rules down and then I just go based on the rules. It's so bad, but I just, I, I actually do well. Like I don't mess up. Sometimes I do, you know, I get like a few questions wrong, but then I'm getting most right. Just well, you're getting on. them right. You're getting high accuracy, but you have been asking me a lot about timing. Yes. <laughs> so what's the problem with this approach? Diagrams. <laughs> well, the problem right. is that you need diagrams and mm -hmm. you're not solving the questions quickly enough. Yeah. You're asking about timing and we talked earlier about efficiency. Mm -hmm. So you know, let's say, for example, if we wanted to do multiplication and we could say, what's four times three? Well, that's four, three times. So you could add four plus four plus four. Mm -hmm. That's slow, but it's still accurate. Yeah. So accuracy is nice, but on a strictly timed exam like the LSAT, you need speed, which means you actually have to know how to multiply. And making inference is kind of like multiplying rather than adding. It's astronomically faster. Mm hmm Yeah. The problem is that when I'm in, you know, like the questions, like sometimes I have like grouping game on the first one. I haven't, 
had a lot of practice with those. So I, I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do diagrams or not. So I just write the rules. I'm like, you know what? I'll just slow down on the questions and just take my time with it. Wait, hold Sorry. up a second. I, I think I just, I missed something earlier that I think is really key. You said that you're writing down the rules, but mm -hmm. you're not even making diagrams. Is that what you're telling me? No, no, no. I don't, I don't make the diagram. So I do rules and then I'm like thinking about like deductions. I don't, yeah. Like I'm like, okay, Q can't go there because it hates F or something like that, you know? So I, I already make that inference in my head and I just dive into the questions. I don't make different scenarios. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. I, I understand what you're saying. And first off, it's unique, which I think is why I didn't catch it before. That's unique that you're able to do that. Most people can't do even do games in their head and get things right, period. I'm not sure that I could. Maybe I could at this point, but most people can't. No, I don't know. I, I haven't even really tried it just because it seems like it would take so long. Yeah. So the fact that you can do it, having be, being a lot newer to the LSAT than I am is super impressive. The yeah. thing is that there is a certain load, there is a certain point at which it's going to come back to you. Yeah. I think maybe there's like a small number of people in the world who are true savants and can really solve all of these in their head with thinking very little about it. My college roommate was like that. I'm super jealous of him. He, he like took the LSAT with no study and got in the high 170s. I don't but, know how that is. Yeah, it was crazy. But I think for most people, it's going to benefit you to write things down. And it might seem annoying in the short term if you're able to do it pretty well without writing things down, like writing down the diagrams. I mean, like even making a main diagram. But in the long term, I think you're going to find that it helps you because the games are meant to push past the limits of norm, normal working memory. Mm -hmm. This is something that will take a while to change your approach on. And so you might not love hearing that when we're less than a month before the August yeah. LSAT. But I do think that in the end, your score will be higher because you're able to solve the questions more quickly. I see. I see. Thank you for that. I literally appreciate it so much because I don't get to have that one-on-one -on -one with my professor. So I just yeah. want to thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, Milana. <laughs> of course. I'm glad to help. Um, any yeah. other questions for today? Um, I think um, I'm going to let you know how much I get on this thir third exam. And then I'm also taking one next week. So I, I'm going to be taking one like every week, I think. So I can just have that because I have like literally four weeks left. So I need to, you know, do well. I hope I do well. Yeah. Just give it your all over these next four weeks, take a timed exam, review it in depth, and then okay. think about changing your approach in a couple of those key areas like we talked about, like trying out different reading comp strategies, trying to actually draw diagrams for logic games. And there's a lot of different ways to go about it. You'll find what works best. But be, be open to changing your approach because I think that could unlock a lot more for you. I mean, it's the fact that you're able to do these things in your head shows me that you're capable of scoring really well on this exam. And the fact that you're not scoring where you want to be, I think, is because you haven't tried out some of these other things, like yeah. making the diagrams, like drawing out local scenarios, and then for reading comp, trying out a different approach there to see what ultimately will work for you. Okay. I'll for sure try these approaches and I'll let you know. Awesome. Thank you again. Where. Yeah, of course. Of course. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Oh, everything. <laughs> Literally. It's because I, I told you I don't have that one-on-one -on -one and like timing was really scaring me, but you're also giving me a lot of, um, you know, things to work on. So you're saying like diagrams for um, games, trying different approaches for reading comp and just taking it slow because, uh, you know, the slower I get to the questions, I mean, in a way, I'll get more right. So I just want to thank you again for that. Yeah, of course. Fantastic. Well, keep in touch and let me know if you need anything moving forward. I'll see you in class soon. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.